Okay, everybody, uh, pleasure to be here with Digital Living City. Let's all take a, a quick uh, minute here and listen to the uh, sounds of the rainforest. Take a deep breath and let's get started. Okay, so they say a picture is worth a thousand words. I would say this picture qualifies. Here we have people enjoying elements of nature in an urban environment. And today, AGZA, the American Green Zone Alliance, is gonna show you some actual examples of how this is happening in the United States. We wanna give a special thanks to the Husqvarna Living City community and Husqvarna for not only inviting us here today, but also designing and manufacturing such incredible tools and technology to help AGSA meet our end. We want to give a quick acknowledgement of our nonprofit partner, our national nonprofit partner, Quiet Communities. Uh, together, we provide educational services and perform AGSA Green Zone certifications. Okay, so AGSA, the American Green Zone Alliance, who are we? We are a leader in low impact grounds maintenance strategies. Our mission is to prudently transition the grounds maintenance industry to quieter, more sustainable practices. And a few examples of applications are commercial crews who service municipalities, schools, and residential properties. So how do we do this? Uh, number one is our green zone certification. This is property transition. It includes institutional and residential size properties. We're gonna give some clear examples of those. Uh, number two is our service professional certification. This is crew transition, uh, education, training, and it acts as a behavior modification model. And other initiatives include our AFTC program, where we test and certify battery electric tool platforms. Okay, so before we go into some of these examples, uh, here is some of the why uh, impacts. It started with gas leaf blower bands rapidly sweeping our country. And as you can see here, it lists 136 cities and 15 states in Canada. That actually has eclipsed 200 cities. And coming from the industry myself, I have worked in the gas industry as a younger uh, child and had my own gas business as a young adult and I know full well the impacts of working with internal combustion. Here are our top 10 impacts of gas operations. On the top and in the center of course is noise and in fact my colleague Jamie Banks of Quiet Communities uh, actually presented for Living City a couple years ago and went into great depth and detail on some of the noise issues. But of course we have what comes out of the exhaust emissions and then lesser known impacts, uh, lower left, for example, toxic and solid waste component. And that's resulting from maintaining small gas engines cradle to grave. We're gonna watch a short video. I call it the parking lot tune-up when I was in the gas business. Uh, this is something that I used to do. I'm not proud of it, but it's something that should be acknowledged. We have the filter right off the carburetor. They get a little gas and oil on it. We put that into the gas, push it around. You can see how dirty it gets. This is the process of which you extend the life of the filter. Right. What happens to this gas that now has the grit, the grease, the dirt inside of it? Normally we can uh, pour it in some dirt or uh, we throw it away in a trash can. It could end up in a landfill as well or poured into the bushes. Sure. Okay, so uh, again, I, you know, it, it is very unfortunate that this practice uh, still goes on, but understand these guys are operating on very thin margins, looking for ways to, to make a living, uh, feed their family. So our approach is to engage them, educate them and train them. I'm happy to say since that video, uh, Jeff from 818 has gone about 50% electric in his operations, therefore mitigating some of these impacts. Uh, doing this for about 10 years, shadowing crews in Southern California, we can conservatively say that one worker 
can account for 50 pieces of solid waste that ends up in landfills. And a lot of these pieces do have uh, a toxic waste component uh, to them. But moving on to solutions, uh, I'm gonna give you some examples of our institutional green zoning. Now a green zone is a property uh, that is certified to do all routine maintenance with people powered and low impact, primarily battery electric operations. This is a uh, city of South Pasadena. This is our first green zone city. And for this particular green zone, uh, they have went all electric for routine maintenance. Uh, the only gas concessions are heavy tree work uh, that is once a year seasonal. And how did we get here? Well, we started with their Crown Jewel Park, Garfield Park, it's 10 acres, five acres of grass. And once we were able to green zone this park, working with their Department of Public Works and their vendor, we made an action plan with the city to green zone all city properties within eight months. And we were able to meet that timeline. Uh, Pre-COVID, we had ceremonies, very well attended, mayor, city council, uh, the vendors and even members of Congress and our Senate have been present and acknowledged our certifications. And then to top it off for the city of South Pasadena to enact, uh, if not permanent change, uh, for their RFP, it has been rewritten. Any vendor that wants to do business, grounds maintenance business within their city needs to go uh, AGSA training or equivalent, and then they have to adhere to the standard of the AGSA Green Zone certification for properties. Very soon after that, a nearby golf course was interested. We were able to green zone this golf course and cut carbon by 70% out of these operations and lower the noise profile 40 to 70%. More recently, uh, LA State Historic Park, that's Los Angeles State Historic Park. This is a California State Park. And what's exciting is the people from Sacramento who manage nearly 200 California State Parks came down and saw what we were doing uh, with this project. And we're earmarked to start three other state parks uh, early next year. So a lot of positive progress from this boots on the ground approach. We also have an entire school district. It was our first. Uh, this is 132 serviceable acres, 15 campuses, and they use cordless electric and people powered tools for all routine maintenance. And one, and finally, uh, a very exciting development, our first robotic mower AGSA Green Zone. We did this with the Langton Group and ALS, and also Husvarna did uh, participate and some support with this project. And here are some of the metrics. Uh, this is a 96 unit HOA. They use Husvarna auto mowers, uh, 40 volt handhelds. It's nearly 30 serviceable acres. And with this project uh, and this uh, certification, per year, 8.4 tons of smog forming emissions have been sequestered in, in, in perpetuity as long as they keep the certification intact. 27 tons of CO2. This project saw a two to four fold reduction in noise. Of course, improved in community health, uh, worker health is enjoyed. And then again, circling back uh, to earlier in the presentation, a lot of the fuel spillage, toxic and solid waste uh, component is mitigated when we convert these from internal combustion operations. And then finally, to top it off here, uh, it's really exciting to see that solar technology is being integrated on these projects, which are charging the Husqvarna auto mowers. All of our projects come with something called ELF. It stands for Environmental Landscape Footprint. It is a trusted independent third party source for impact reporting. Uh, our reports are trusted by air districts, governmental agencies, and basically we give a snapshot of the before and after uh, so people can understand what their environmental remediation benefits are and also the cost benefits of all of these projects. 
we were able to take our institutional green zone success and we created uh, what we call the AGZA Residential Green Zone Initiative, ARGZI. And basically we're encouraging homeowners to create their own green zones now. Uh, Jared here attended one of our workshops. Um, he went back and asked his gardener to convert to electric and not use as many chemicals around his house. The gardener actually did not want to do that. He paid his gardener $250 a month. So he basically fired the gardener and invested um, in a suite of tools. And now he does his own yard work and he loves it. And he actually ordered a sign uh, from us so he can show the community and his neighbors what he's doing. Here's an old timer in New York. Uh, he has a plug-in lawnmower, but as you can see, that's it. Everything else is people-powered. And if you take a look at those people-powered tools, uh, they're very old. He's been doing it like this for a, a, a long time. Okay, continuing on with solutions, AGSA Service Pro Certification. And this is where we really believe we're making meaningful change. We're embracing the grounds maintenance workforce, making them stakeholders in this process, empowering them with information, and now they actually have a say of what goes on in their work environments. And more often than not, all of the projects with this approach are more successful. This is SunTech. Remember this company? They're out of Florida. This is a new franchise model. Uh, we're actually helping them with their first franchisee in Southern California. And uh, all of their franchisees in the future will be AGSA Certified Service Pro certified. And then continuing on, uh, this is a landscape maintenance company, Francisco's. Uh, we're just out there on, on the ground with these guys. These are not just photo ops. This is actually shadowing them and, and, and seeing what the tools are doing and how they're holding up under these conditions. Uh, these tools that you see, the electric tools, are more than a year old. This company still is primarily gas, but they started their e-crew. And we're really happy to see that they're actually adhering to the certification advice. Um, in the certification, we encourage them to hang their tools up instead of throw them in the back of the truck, secure them from theft so they can realize their ROI. And then finally, AFTC, AGSA Field Testing Certification. And here are some of the brands that are currently AFTC. So what AFTC does is go beyond dynamic and static testing and controlled environments. AFTC certification takes years because we place the tools with operators in various regions under very extreme conditions to really understand what these tools can do when they replace their gas counterparts. And we're really happy to say that Husqvarna 40 volt uh, here in the States commercial is AFTC along with their auto mowers. And really the essence of AFTC is to provide this evidence-based reliability because we all understand when investing in these battery platforms, they're more expensive than their gas counterparts. So they really do need to be vetted and we need to make sure that they can realize their return on investment and, and be a, a, a very positive outcome for the people that invest in these tool platforms. And then we don't just stop at performance and durability. We really do vet everything, the distribution, uh, the retailer and service model. We, we really want to make sure there's adequate parts and aftermarket care and service, again, to give people a good experience with their investment into electric platforms. And that has been my presentation today. I want to thank all of you. And if you need to get in touch with us, please at, uh, info at agza.net. We look forward to answering some questions later. And Eric, I'll bring it back to you.